There we are, everybody. Okay, now listen. This is video number two, publishing today. Uh, before I was injured, I was thinking, gosh, it would be kind of fun to weigh every single shoe that I own with this scale right here. And so that's what we're gonna do. I've broken the shoes down into four categories as you, as you saw in yesterday's vlog. Basically, trail training shoes, trail racing shoes, road training shoes, and then road racing shoes. So we're gonna break all of them down by weight today. I have my computer, my computer here. I'm gonna plug in the weights into the spreadsheet and that way I can stay completely organized and I think it will help me provide all of you better information moving forward. So, all right, let's get down to business. It's, it's gonna take a little while. There is quite a pile of shoes right behind me. Running shoe collection broken down by category and weight. I hope the ounces is good for everyone inside the US, but I know there's a lot of viewers outside the US, and so I tried to do ounces and grams, and I didn't show you every single shoe. If I did that, we would be here all night, if you know what I mean. So uh, that is the collection, though. I weighed every single shoe, and it was a really, really good uh, activity for me to do because now I have a better sense in my mind after recording all of these numbers in ounces and grams into a spreadsheet just to help me kind of co co basically compare as I'm looking at the spreadsheet like what is uh, what is heavy and what is light what is feeling good on the legs what is not so much so anyway it was a really good thing for me to do I'm, I'm surprised I didn't think to do this sooner but it, it's water under the bridge and now we are all caught up caught up with it all right and again four categories for the shoes thus far but listen I could make another subcategory for 5k racing shoes for example i get a lot of questions from all of you about 5k racing shoes uh and if you have questions for me don't forget to specify the surface that you're racing on whether it's grass for cross country whether it's road for uh, a road race or or maybe it's a, a trail race over rock you know really rocky terrain so make sure you specify the surface okay so we got the road no sorry the trail training trail racing road training and road racing. I'm gonna walk you through some shoes that kind of jumped out at me based on weight. Now I'm not gonna bring in any other factors as far as the, the, the ride or the midsole or the upper or anything like, or the grip, nothing like that. I'm just focused on the weight. All right, so let's dive in first of all to the trail training lineup. And listen, we could talk again all night about every shoe. Instead, I'm just gonna hone in on the Nike Wild Horse 5, that's right. Coming in at, let me just double check here, 8.9 ounces or 254 grams. That's pretty darn good for a trail training shoe. Uh, compared to Solomon, compared to Innovate, compared to even a New Balance shoe that I, or sorry, a La Sportiva shoe that I don't run in anymore, but it, like, I think the La Sportiva is 10.6 ounces or 301 grams. So I must say, that gets me pretty excited once I'm healthy to get back into the Nike Wild Horse 5. And um, listen, I think Solomon and Innovate are doing amazing things, especially since their shoes are they're like they're making shoes for the mountains like big mountain runs aggressive runs rocky terrain muddy conditions i would say that this is not that type of trail uh, training shoe uh we will see i need to put more work into it see how it does in wet conditions etc etc but anyway the nike wild horse 5 definitely jumped out at me as the lightest uh as the lightest trail training shoe that I own. And moving on to trail racing. And again, if you have questions, make sure you specify the distance for the trail racing. 5K trail race is a lot different than a 50K trail race, all right? So for me, I love the Solomon S-Lab Sense 6 SG, and the SG stands for soft ground, meaning the lugs are a little have a little more depth, so it's good for mud, good for uh, kind of gravel conditions. It just has a little more grip on the outsole. And I plan to wear 
uh, the Sense 7, which is now, so the Sense 6, this is last year's model. So the Sense 7 is now released. I will probably be purchasing it in the not so distant future to get ready. Yes, I plan to wear this shoe for the Pikes Peak Ascent. Now listen, this is an aggressive shoe. I wouldn't wear this over a half marathon. Uh, this will beat your legs up a little bit, but if you want to go fast, this is kind of this is basically my go-to trail racing shoe for fast, shorter-ish trail races. Anything under a half marathon, I can. And listen, I wore a nine-ounce shoe, the Solomon S Lab Speed Cross, in 2017 when I took third at the Pikes Peak Ascent. Kind of, you know, kind of surprised myself with a third place finish. Well, I was wearing a shoe that weighed basically two ounces heavier than this shoe. And I'm just going to mention right now, I think weight makes a big difference in, in shoes. A huge difference. Remember I asked yesterday, uh, does anybody know how many steps a runner takes in a marathon? Well, I don't have the answer for you yet. Hopefully somebody posts. I haven't had a chance to go look at all the comments from yesterday, but I'm guessing it's... I don't know. Is it over 30,000 steps? Just, I don't know how many steps it is. It's a lot of steps. And imagine every single step through your gait cycle having to carry uh, two extra ounces, three extra ounces. Over time, I think that weight will add up in your legs and your legs will get tired a little earlier in the race. You may not even know it's happening, but anyway, that's how I approach uh, racing shoes especially and you know my also my thesis. I'll mention this real quick. I love training shoes that are actually a smidge heavier. Why? I think it can make your legs a little stronger and then when you go throw on a lightweight three ounce shoe you feel like you're cruising on air like you're if you're floating on the clouds like there's nothing on your feet. So that's how I approach my training shoes and my that's pro that's why I'm not afraid of the Solomon well, I don't think it's in here, but the Solomon Speed Cross 5, I wear it all the time, even though it's 10.6 ounces or 302 grams. Okay, moving on to road training. It's hard to deny. So this is a shoe that jumps out at me. It's not going to be a surprise to all of you. The Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. That's right. This shoe has a lot of people's attention coming in at 7.3 ounces for a training shoe. That's lightweight, everybody. That's really good. 7.3 ounces or 208 grams. And I'll just throw in the mix. The New Balance Beacon is beating this guy by almost an ounce at 6.4 ounces or 183 grams. Now, I'd say the Zumex foam through the turbo has a little more responsiveness compared to the Beacon, but I'm telling you, so many of you basically have, I think, bought the Beacon because I've endorsed it so much. And it's because the comfort, I think the upper is pretty solid, and that weight, you just cannot deny the weight of the New Balance Beacon at 6.4 ounces. It's just crazy. In fact, oh, okay, I'll leave it at that. But anyway, those are two shoes in the road training category that it's just hard. And yes, you could race in this, and you could probably race a 5K in the Beacon. I'd be a little careful uh, because the upper is a little, I'll put it in the sloppy category. It just kind of, it's not really a, a great lockdown feel in the Beacon, but yes, both of those shoes, you could pull off a 5K in these shoes. And moving on to the fourth and final category, the road racing category. Are you ready? What's jumping out at me? Of course, the Nike Vaporfly 4% flying it coming in at an even six ounces or just over six ounces or 172 grams. But wait, not so fast. Wait for it. The Saucony Fast Twitch 8 coming in at six ounces, 171 grams. These shoes weigh the exact same. I was shocked. I could, I had kind of completely forgot how lightweight the Fast Twitch 8 is from Saucony. And actually, uh, my brother was looking for a recommendation recently for a, I think like a 10K half marathon shoe. And I pitched him this idea. It's very affordable. Now the Fast Twitch 9 is available now. This is the Fast Twitch 8. I think the Fast Twitch 9 did lose a little bit of weight. Uh, but anyway, both shoes right here, six ounces, that blew me away. I couldn't believe it. So um, now two kind of, Different shoes, just different shoes. Definitely a marathon shoe. And I know people that wear this and race this for a marathon, racing the shoe for a marathon. But um, anyway, kind of surprised me and kind of a, a little bit of a, 
uh, eh, a little bit of a struggle situation. I think Hoka, you got a little ways to go with a carbon rocket coming in at 7.1 ounces or 202 grams. Listen, an entire ounce, again, I think will add up over the course of a marathon on your legs. Just, I'm just calling the spade a spade. So I think Hoka is going to at least, I bet they lose at least a half an ounce, maybe more in the next iteration. So basically the Carbon Rocket 2, which will probably come out next December or January, uh, I bet it loses at least a half an ounce is my prediction for this shoe. And let us not forget one more shoe. Can you believe it? The lightest of all of them, the Skechers Razor 3, coming in at 5.6 ounces or 160 grams. That's impressive. Now, I do have some concerns about durability. The outsole is already wearing out after a little over 100 miles in this shoe. But if you are a runner who is on a budget, who um, knows you can stay healthy, so you don't mind a shoe that has very minimal arch support, uh, this shoe could be the, the ticket for you. And keep in mind, I think any miles past 200, 250, you might start to see a pretty quick decline. Um, I think I've seen a couple people mention to me that they've gotten like 300 miles out of the Razor 3 from Skechers, but I'm of the opinion just based off of 100 miles that you're probably not gonna get that much more than two to 250 in the miles category. So pretty exciting for the Skechers Razor 3. And of course the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro is the lightest shoe that I own. 3.1 ounces and the heaviest, the Innovate Arctic Claw 300 at 11.7 ounces. Pretty crazy. Uh, just two completely different shoes. It's amazing how you can develop a shoe for a very specific niche. And this shoe, this shoe has uh, micro spikes in the bottom of it. So that's pretty neat. And yes, we're going with scale for the keyword. Scale is the keyword today. And that question of the day, what is your ideal weight for a trainer? and for a racer. And if you want to break it down by road and trail, that's fine, but you could keep it simple. Just what's your ideal weight? What do you shoot for? Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Hit it up down below. I'd appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching this second vlog all about the weight of all these different running shoes. I'm just like, it's so exciting. It's amazing. And what gets me excited is that in three years, five years, 10 years, they're going to be pushing the envelope. This shoe is going to look ridiculously heavy in 10 years. I'm just calling it right now. That's the beauty of technology and just pushing innovation forward. So seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Woo! See you tomorrow. Boom, 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 boom.